everyone. This is Evangelist Janet Allen with It Could Have Been Me. I am so grateful today. I got my sister in Christ with me, Pastor Amen. Anita Rhodes. She's coming to share some words of wisdom and words of encouragement for us today. It Indeed, it is a blessing. Thank you for accepting Amen. the invitation, uh, Pastor. It God bless you. Honor. Um, just a few announcements before we get into our service. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to let everyone know that it could have been me has yes. you know, really just grown, just went to a whole different level to God be the glory. Yes, because yes. If it has not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would mm. we be? So mm. I am grateful unto God what yes. he's doing with it could have been me. This yes. is only the beginning. God has been working and planning things and dealing with my mind regarding it could have been me. So it's much mm -hmm. more to come. Uh, a pastor, yes. I am grateful um, that you are here with us on today. She's going to come and share her testimony and words yes. of encouragement if she has some. And I'm going to bring the word. Amen. So, Amen. But before we get started, you know, prayer is the foundation of everything. Amen. We Amen. cannot do anything without prayer because if we're not inviting the spirit of God in, you know, yes. what spirit is we inviting in? So yes. let us go into prayer before we even get started with anything. Yes. Um, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the opportunity and the time to call on your name. Thank you for just being the excellent God that you are, oh God. Lord, I ask you to come on into the service, oh God. Lord, make us decrease as you increase in us more and more. Stir up the gifts on the inside of us, oh God. Open your people's eyes that they can see. Open their ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Open their hearts to receive and their minds to obey, oh God. Lord, I ask you to go into the nursing home homes, oh God. Yes, Lord, touch that evil body in the name of Jesus, oh in God. Jesus. Lord, I ask you to go to the hospital, oh God. Lord, yes. there is one crying on the bed of affliction, asking, yes. oh God, this to yes. help me. Father, yes. you are the present help in the time of trouble, yes. oh God. Jesus. Lord, I ask you to go into the prisons, oh God. Touch their yes. mind, yes. body, as well as in their souls, oh God. Lord, yes. I ask you to look down upon our leaders. Leaders yes. of this country, yes. oh God. Yes. Lord, yes. touch their minds, body, and soul. Touch our mm. presence, Yes, Lord. Oh yes, Lord. Touch the Senate, yes. oh God. Lord, Jesus. Lord, touch the governors, oh God. Touch yes. the police officers in the name yes. of Jesus. In the name I of Jesus. You're able to do all things, but you're able, Lord. Lord. Father, you're Father able, I Lord. Need, oh God, to go mm. be with these pastors and these yes, prophets Jesus. and the leaders, even the more, oh God, your people yes, need more yes, and yes, less yes, of themselves. You yes. said, speak me first, the kingdom of heaven mm. and all his righteousness. Yes. And all these things shall be added unto you. Father, yes. we need more of thee and less of ourselves. Yes. Bless yes. us, oh God, indeed. Bless us. Heal, yes. oh God, indeed. Yes. Heal. Yes. Deliver, yes. oh God, deliver. Yes. Not yes. thine yes. own way. Father, I ask you, oh God, to go overseas, oh God. Yes, you Lord know Jesus. the people in Ukraine and everybody yes, that's in yes, a need, that's going through something on this side yes, of the Lord throne, Jesus. oh God. Yes, Lord, Lord, the word uh, asks us the question. It says, is there anything too hard for thee? Father, nothing, there's nothing too hard nothing for thee, too hard but you for are the nothing. creator of the heavens and the earth. Yes. Father, you can just speak a word and it shall yes. be done. Yes, Father, I ask you to just heal the land, oh God. Heal the Lord, land. Be with ministries on today, oh God. Yes, Send a rainbow Jesus. word to everybody, Father. Yes. Lord yes. Jesus, make us decrease as you increase in us more yes, and more. Jesus. But yes, help Jesus. us give you the praise and glory because yes, you are so worthy, oh God. Yes, and these God. Ask, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Indeed, prayer is always in order. The Amen. Word Pray without ceasing. Yes, yes. You, at the moment that you're feeling weary, you just mm. don't know. If you fall down on, in prayer and you begin yes. to call upon the name of the Lord, you gain yes, strength and you yes. gain to be restored and so that you can press forward just a little mm -hmm. bit more. But yes, indeed, like I stated it. before, we have Pastor Anita Rose with us. She's going to yes. come and share her testimony or whatever God has put on her heart. 
So Amen. Chris in your hand. Oh, God bless you, Evangelist Allen. It's such a privilege and an honor to be here with you. And thank you for the invitation. Yeah. I don't count it lightly. I just thank God that God put me on your heart. Amen. Yeah. To be able to give this testimony. And truly, I do have a testimony. I am a living miracle, a yeah. walking and talking miracle. Yeah. Amen. I was just uh, thinking when I was praying, I said, well, God, I said, I have so much to tell. I said, yeah. but I can't tell it all. So what <laughs> do you want me to testify about today? And as I was praying, God began to put in my spirit what he wanted me to tell on today. Yes. And um, I, I was under Bishop T.D. Jake's leadership for 10 years before uh, me and uh, my um, ex-husband went out on our own ministry. Oh. And I remember Bishop used to always say, he said, well, you know what? Uh, you give your testimony. He said, people don't tell the real testimonies anymore. He said, people give pretty testimonies. He said, they don't tell all the, the bad, the ugly that they've gone through. They just give the pretty testimony. Well, I'm not here to give a pretty testimony today. So, I'm, Is it okay? I'm going to be transparent and I'm going to yes. tell the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. Amen. Because God get all the glory out of it. And truly, yes. we know that we're overcome by the blood of the lamb and yes. by the words of our testimony. So I don't want any rocks crying out for me. I'm going to tell the goodness of the Lord because truly he He's been so good to me. He's been better than good to me. I just can't even praise him enough. People ask me, why you shout so hard? Why you praise God so hard? You pray so hard. You sing so hard. I said, if you have gone through what I've been through, you'll be praising him too. So yes. I give God all the glory. Um, uh, in the year of 2015, I... Um, like I said, me and my ex-husband, we were we had our own ministry. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, one weekend, it was in July of 2015, and I had gone to bed, gone, and I had a dream. And I don't know, it's, it was more a vision than a dream, but I was asleep. And mm -hmm. I remember in 2 Corinthians, what Paul said, where he was caught up in the third heaven. And yeah. he said, I don't know if I was in the body or not, you know, because it was just, it's so surreal, but yeah. I heard a person in the dream talking to me. So I wasn't seeing them, but I could hear them. And they told me in, in the dream that you're getting ready to go through a job experience. And they told me what areas that I was going to be attacked, told me different areas in my life that I was going to be attacked. And yeah. they said, but when you come out of all of it, you're going to get double for your trouble. Ooh. And I woke up and it was, um, like I said, it wasn't a dream. It was more, of, I said, there was God's angel talking to me and, mm -hmm. you know, while I was asleep. And so I woke up and I was like, God, I said, I never had anything like that to happen to me before. Mm -hmm. I was like, then I'm getting ready to go through a job experience. So I began to just pray because I wasn't sure that was the Lord of the enemy at the time, you know, thinking about it. And I was like, Lord, I just got to pray. And I just started praying. And I remember a couple of months after that, I had another dream. And this time I knew it was the enemy. He mm -hmm. said that I, he said, I'm getting ready to attack you and I'm going to destroy you. He said, I'm going to destroy your marriage. He said, you're going to be left nothing when I finish. And I remember I woke up and when I woke up, I remember waking up because it was like five in the morning and I woke up my um, husband at the time and I told him I just had a dream. And I told him what the dream was about. And I said, we need to pray. We need to pray. And it's time to rebuke the enemy. And I began to get up and pray. And he was just looking at me like I was crazy. Uh, he's used to me getting up at five in the morning to pray because I always have the intercessory prayer at five in the morning. Yes. But this particular time, I was rebuking and binding the enemy, you know, because I said, well, he said that he's going to destroy me and he's going to destroy our marriage. And mm -hmm. I just prayed and prayed and prayed. And I remember um, him coming out and looking at me. And he said, it's just not this much praying in the world. You got to do all of this praying. And I said, you don't understand. I said, I was told that I was getting ready to go through a job experience. And I say, and we need to bind the works of the enemy because he said yes. that he's going to destroy me and my marriage. Mm -hmm. So I end up uh, going and I just begin to seek the Lord. But shortly after that, a series of events truly began to happen. Oh. Uh, the first event that happened was I lost my job. I, um, I'm a physical therapist by profession. And 
I was uh, had a really, really good job, a six figure income, and we were living large, a large two story home that we had built after we got married and uh, cars, you know, just just in abundance. We were living in abundance. And um, my husband was used to us living like that because I made about twice as much as he made. So he was used to the finer things in life. Mm-hmm. And so when I lost my job, I, you know, I was saying, okay, okay, I can get a job, you know, therapy or needed everywhere so I can get a job. And so I wasn't worried, you know, about not having a job. So I began to search and send resumes out and um, go on interviews and nothing panned out. Mm. Uh, I didn't get any of the interviews I went on. I didn't get the jobs. I said, and this is not like, because I've always gotten jobs. Like, you know, I, I don't even have to go on the interviews. They will call me and offer the job because it was just that much favor over my life. But this time I was not able to get a job. Months went by, months went by. I, I applied for my unemployment. I said, okay, let me just apply for my unemployment until a job come. Mm-hmm. And I got my unemployment. But a year passed. I still have oh. not gotten a job. Unemployment ran out because you only can get it for that one year. And so I still didn't get my job. And so I remember my husband was saying, well, you need to just go and try to do something else outside of your profession because you need to work because I can't pay all these bills by myself. And he's a man that's concerned about finances. Um, You know how some men said they want to take care of the wife and they don't want the wife taking care of them. Well, he wasn't like that. He didn't mind if I took care of him. He didn't (laughs) mind if I paid the bills as long as he can have his extra money to do what he wanted to do. So, um, yeah. So, so ladies, the ones that you hear, you got to be careful when you say you're getting a man and every man that say there's a man of God. Now, everybody that say that they are a man of God, not a man of God. And you will soon find out because they will show their head and you will find out. So we were both pastor in the church, but after I did my unemployment ran out, and I didn't get another job yet. So I told him, I said, well, the Lord said it was time for me to pursue, you know, ministry more while I'm, you know, waiting and not getting a job. I said, there's purpose behind it. So he decided, well, if you're not going to work, I'm not going to work. Oh, Lord. And I said, excuse me. So he said, I'm going to work, but I'm not going to get any money, any money toward any bills or anything. He said, because if you can sit at home, then I'm going to enjoy myself. And so I remember when my unemployment ran out, my savings account ran out. And because oh. I, I was living off my savings account, he literally stopped paying any bills. And oh. I was living off my savings account. And when my savings account ran out, I didn't have the money to continue to pay the bills. Oh. My mortgage, the mortgage and bills was $4,500 a month. I oh. did not have the money to continue to pay that. And he would not give me any, any money. Uh, oh. And I began to see the ugliness of him stand up. Mm -hmm. And then I remember maybe three months later after that, we got a certified mail saying that we were in risk of getting our house put in foreclosure because three months had passed and mortgage hadn't been paid. When he saw that certified uh, mail, he literally said, I'm getting ready to live my own life. I'm going to live single. He took his wedding ring off. He moved his clothes upstairs because our house is so large. He took the upstairs to live and left me downstairs. Oh. And he gave me the silent treatment. He never spoke to me, never talked to me. He did what he pleased. And this went on for nine months. Mm -hmm. He began to go out and live as he was single. He began to date, uh, got into relationships, being unfaithful toward me. And I remember that it bothered me so. I was like, how can someone be so cruel to do this? And it was like he intentionally wanted to hurt me at any cost. He wanted to hurt me as much as he could. Mm -hmm. And I began to go into a deep depression because I couldn't uh, tell anybody because we're pastors. I'm trying to keep him covered. And I want people to know our business. So I remember I just began to just... um, I, I shut down, shut down on talking to people. I didn't want anybody to know what's going on. And I began to go into a deep depression. 
And oh. that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to shut down. He wants you to stop communicating with people. He wants you to keep your mouth shut. And yes. that's one thing that you don't do when the enemy is on. When you're on attack from the enemy, don't close your mouth. Don't yes. stop talking. Don't stop calling out on the Lord. Don't stop yes. communicating with people because the enemy wants to isolate you. And when he isolates you, then he can come in and attack you. And yes. that's what he did. He isolated me, made me feel like I'm, I'm, you know, I don't need to talk to nobody. I don't need to tell anybody what's going on. Yes. But my husband was dating on me. Oh, wow. dating, going out every weekend, get dressed up, going out like he was single. And oh. I said, Lord, have mercy and going to church every Sunday. Jesus. I said, Lord, have mercy. And soon he put me at the church. He didn't even want me at the church with him anymore. This went on for nine months. He never spoke oh. to me. Never gave any money to pay any bills. He didn't do anything but live his life like he wanted to. And oh. I went into a, such a uh, depression until the enemy attacked my mind. Oh. The enemy then, then the devil said, I'm going to take your mind now. And I remember he attacked my mind. So, and the, the attack was so bad until I never heard anybody even going through anything like this. But the enemy began to speak to me through my ear. And it was audible, just like I'm talking to you. Like oh. a person is talking to you. And I remember that there was like a war going on in my mind where I can hear, I can hear the angels and I can hear the enemy and they were warring. I can hear the scriptures being oh. called over my mind. And I remember that the enemy said, he kept saying, I'm taking your mind. I'm taking your mind. So this was an attack on my mind. Oh my. And the attack was so severe. It was something I've never gone through. Oh my God. It, it was something I can't even describe. It was so bad. Lord. I remember how the enemy, it was just warring day and night, day and night. The enemy would keep me up at night. I couldn't sleep. Warring in my mind, talking to me, telling me what he's going to do. And, and I began to hear one enemy, then another one, another one. They just began to war in my mind. And I began to cry to God saying, God, I can't take this anymore. Oh, People God. began to think I was crazy. And I remember the enemy said that you, I'm getting ready to take your life tonight. Call your children. And let them know that you are going to be gone. That I'm taking your life. And I was so, it, it had bogged my mind so much until I believed what was being said to me. And I remember my children oh, have been my, trying that to devil is alive. me. Excuse me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, yes. I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. I remember the attack got so bad. I lost about 25 pounds in the matter of one month. Mm -hmm. And my children's that they couldn't get in touch and hear from me in weeks. They finally came to my house and they had the police with them. Um, and they said, I know something's wrong because my, my mother called and said, she's going to die tonight. And my ex-husband wasn't there. He was, um, he was gone. He was out. And so the police, they called me to come to the door and I finally went to the door for them and they asked, you know, what was going on and everything. And I and I was talking all out crazy, didn't you know, because my the attack on my mind was so severe until I couldn't even talk straight. Oh. And I remember my children came in my house and they packed some clothes and said, We're getting you out of here. Yeah. And they got me out of there and I went to their house. And I remember the attack was so bad. I began, I told my children, we would, we would go from church to church. I was mm -hmm. calling everybody, pray for me, pray for me. It was such an attack until my mind was literally out. I, I, I remember at one point I said, God, if I can't live like this. God, mm -hmm. if you take me, just take me now. It was such an attack that I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. It was that bad. I remember I was just crying out oh all night. I remember I went two weeks not even sleeping. It was just, it was just that bad. And if, if anybody out there have ever had attack on their mind, they'll understand what I'm, I'm, yes. I'm talking about because yes. the attack was so severe. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't even cope. 
All I could do was just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And my children couldn't understand it because they were around me. And I kept saying that the voice is talking to me and the devil is talking to me. And they thought I was crazy. Uh -huh. But the, the voice was so loud in my head until it kept telling me all the, the things that it was going to do. I'm going to make you jump off a building. I'm going to make you have an accident, a wreck in your car, everything that it was saying. And he literally, the enemy did I was driving one day and he um, had somebody that was driving a truck in front of me and they just emergency stopped immediately like that. And I slammed in the back of the enemy said, I told you I'm going to kill you. And it was, oh my God, oh evangelist, it was so bad. I had to go into the mental hospital. I was in there for about a week. Um, my ex-husband, you know, putting me in the mental hospital. He said I was crazy. It was telling everybody at church I was crazy. And they put me on all this medication. And I literally just began to cry out to God and saying, God, I can't, I can't, I can't endure this attack anymore. Okay. Uh, um, I, and I don't know what else to do. And I began to just cry out to God, cry out to God, mm -hmm. because it was something that I never heard anybody gone through. And I remember, and the God, and I remember one time that I heard, I don't know if you heard uh, Bishop Duncan Williams. He's in Africa. I remember that he had testified one time. His testimonies were so similar to mine. And he said the attack, it was, you know, in, in um, Psalms 91, where it talks about, I would be not afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by day. That's yes. what my attack was. It was attack of the terrors by night and the arrows by day, where the yes. enemy was warring in my mind, warring all. And it was so loud. I, You know, it was like, I'm literally talking to you. It was that loud. You, can oh you imagine that loud? And you got so many voices standing at the same time in your mind, attacking you, telling you all this stuff. It was just that bad. Oh my! And I ended up going back to my husband I, because I kept telling my children, I can't do this. I need, I need my husband. I need my husband. I need my husband. They was like, he doesn't care about you. He, mm -hmm. gave, he, he, he gave up on you. He left you for dead. You was in the house about to die. You hadn't eaten anything. You lost all your weight. And they say, we are not letting you go back. And I remember I begged them to let me go back. But it was all the enemy. He wanted to con continue to have me still there with him because those spirits that was on my husband. And I found out that he had gotten involved. Not only was he having an affair, he, he got addicted to porn. And it was so, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, evangelist. It was nothing but the Lord that kept me. The okay. Lord that kept my mind because to this day, I don't know how I did not lose my mind because the enemy tried everything he could to take my mind. Oh. And I remember after I went back, my husband came back. We went to church. So we started back going to church together. Mm -hmm. And maybe a month after that, I was still on all these medications because the voice was still there and I couldn't sleep or anything at night. And I remember I went back to church and about a month after I went back to church, I remember I got up in the pulpit to open up service and to pray to, um, to lead the congregation in the prayer. And before that, my husband was standing at the altar down on the floor from the pulpit and he begged for me to come down and we were going to stand at the altar and pray. And as soon as I got down to the altar by him, all of a sudden I felt faint. I, I felt like I, I didn't know, like my something was going on. Something wasn't right in my body. My head began to pound, pound. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, I, I felt I collapsed. I collapsed. And when I woke up, I had had a major stroke. Oh, God. My face had twisted. I couldn't talk. I couldn't move. I was paralyzed on my full left side of my body. Oh, God. I... And I remember that my daughter was at church and I remember they were calling out for her to come and I began to hear. I couldn't talk. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't move. But I remember hearing her in the back. She said, Mom, don't give up. And I could see this life where I was drifting. Literally, my life was drifting away. 
I had no life left in me, and I just wanted to just go on, go on home with the Lord. I said, God, I've been through too much. I was just thinking it in my mind, just let me go on, take me. And I remember my daughter was hollering in my ear, saying, oh. call Jesus, say Jesus, Jesus, don't give up, mom. Say Jesus, Jesus, don't give up, mom. I remember I started trying to say it. I couldn't. Talk, but I kept trying to say it. I was thinking it, but it couldn't come out. And she kept saying, say it, say it, say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I finally began to say Jesus. It would barely come out. But I began to call on the name of Jesus. And I know that he heard my prayer. And I know <laughs> the ambulance came and they got me. And this happened right in the midst of my congregation at the church. Oh. And next thing I know, I was in intensive care. Oh. And the doctors came and told me and said, You have cranial hemorrhaging. Your brain is hemorrhaging. And it's caused you to have a major stroke. He said, We're going to have to go in and we're going to have to do brain surgery to stop the bleeding. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> And they said that we're gonna we're gonna give you twenty five percent chance to make it, and it was the evening. And they said, "Well, if it doesn't stop bleeding by in the morning, we're gonna have to do emergency brain surgery." And I began to call on the name of God again. I said, "Father, you promised me that I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord." I was saying it in my mind because I wasn't able to talk, and I remember. I, they said, we're going to give you an MRI. They gave me one MRI. <laughs> and they said, still bleeding too much. They gave me a second MRI that night. <laughs> and they began to talk to my husband. They said, it's still bleeding too much. We're going to have to, we're going to have to do brain surgery. And I remember motioning to him, do it one more time. <laughs> do one more. I motioned one more to him. <laughs> and they did one more MRI. And he said, it's a miracle. The the, the bleeding has stopped. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The bleeding stopped, but it still left me paralyzed on my left side from my head down. I couldn't do anything for myself. I stayed in intensive care for three weeks. And finally, they allowed me to go to go home. I was in a wheelchair. Uh, they made a custom brace for my arm and for my leg because I couldn't do anything with it. And I remember going home. I could not do anything for myself. Nothing. Nothing. Couldn't feed myself. Couldn't dress myself. Couldn't go to the bathroom myself. Couldn't bathe myself. I, the things that we take for granted. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I couldn't do anything myself. I was in a wheelchair. Mm. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. They, didn't, they began to help me to go to physical therapy. And I am a physical therapist, so I knew. I had had patients that this has happened to before, and those patients died, or they went into a coma. Oh my! But God did not let me go into a coma. He didn't let the enemy take my life, even though the enemy tried so hard when he attacked my mind, attacked my body. But God said, "Not so. Oh, you God. shall live and not die, and declare the works of the Lord." And I remember I began to pray and believe God. God said, "God, you're well able to do this. You're well able to heal me. But by your stripes, I am healed. You're able to heal me, God." And I began to anoint myself, even when I couldn't do anything else. I got my right hand, the side that I could use, and I even got my blessed oil. And I began to anoint myself from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I said, by his stripes, I am ill. I yes. am ill. And I began to fight. I began to fight in the spirit. I began to fight, fight for my life, saying I shall live and not die. I began to fight for my life. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I still had the issues going on in my mind. Now my body, too. The enemy still was saying that I'm taking you out. I'm taking you out. And I know that God has something so much greater for me to do because the attack like that, like I've never heard anybody say before, 
the attack was so severe. Yes. But I remember after about six months, I said, I'm getting out this wheelchair. Even though I couldn't do anything on my left side, I had a custom brace on and a custom on my leg and on my arm, this big heavy brace. Mm -hmm. And I began to take that brace off. And I said, I'm coming out of this. I would not live like this, God. I would not live like this. And I began Lord. to go to my therapy. I began to tell them what I needed done. And God began to start letting some feelings come back. Okay. So I began to let a little motion come back. The more I anointed myself, the more I kept going to therapy, the more I kept praying. Little oh. by little, I started getting a little feeling here or there. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I told my husband, I said, I refuse to get back in that wheelchair. This was six months after the stroke. I said, I refuse to get back in that wheelchair. I would not get in that wheelchair. And I got a walker. And I began to learn to take steps. Making that paralyzed size, making that side that was paralyzed move. I began to make it move while I had the brace on. I began to make it move. I began to tell them, help me to stand up. And I would stand with the brace on. And I was saying, I'm coming out of this. And I worked day and night on myself and praying. And there's nobody but God. Slowly, I began to get movement. <laughs> I remember when I would eat. I couldn't feel the left side of my face because I still had a droop and it was still twisted. Oh. And when I eat, the food would come out the left side. My, my husband began to get ashamed of me. When we went to church, he wouldn't even take me in church. He would call the armor bearer to come and get me out the car. He was embarrassed. When we would go to eat, the food would come out the side of my mouth because I had no control. <laughs> and no control what I ate. I barely I began to start speaking more. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, about nine months after I had the stroke, my husband began to ask for a divorce. He said, this is more than I bargained for. I still wasn't able to work. I was able to dress some, but not a lot. I still wasn't able. I still had my walker in the custom brace. <laughs> He began to tell me, I'm not attracted to you anymore. I said, I said, I said, I and I began to beg and plead, don't leave me. I said, we were put together to bring God glory. I need you. We got into altercation. And he left. He packed all his clothes and left me, not able to work, not able to completely take care of myself. I was devastated. I was devastated. I couldn't believe he abandoned me when I needed him. And I remember crying, crying, day after day, crying, crying. Say, God, what am I going to do? I can't work. I can't pay these bills. I can't take care of myself. And I remember after I kept crying, God said, dry your tears. He said, I'm going to take care of you. I'm your Jehovah Jireh. I'm your husband. He said, let him go. Give him up. Let him go. He said, because he didn't reject you, he rejected me. He rejected the God that's in you. No, 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 say that in the Oh, I don't say that. No, 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 no,
Even my husband left me. And I just kept remembering, you go into Joe, your Job experience. So instead of him saying, you ought to curse God and die, he left. He abandoned me and left me like that. Mm. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. And God began to show me that he's Jehovah Jireh. I remember my sister was telling me places to go to that would help pay bills and things. I was calling people. I was on the phone calling, trying to get help. I was calling, trying to get people to assist in paying my bills and my mortgage. And I couldn't get anybody to do it because when they begin, you have to give them all your information. And when you begin, they begin to see how I was living, the cars that I had, the house that I lived in, nobody would help me. And God told me, don't go to another person to ask for help. Okay. I'm going to do it. And I said, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. And God began to move on my behalf like I've never seen before. He began to make ways where there seemed to be no way. He began to give me strategy. He would show me, now you go this place and you apply, do this. But he never let me go to any place of charity. I lived in my house three years like that. Never once did my house go into foreclosure. Mm. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. I still wasn't working. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. Never had a light to be turned off. Never had electricity turned off. Always had enough food to eat. God proved himself to be Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He took care of me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. And I know that God is not through with me yet because he promised to bring me all the way out of this. Yeah. With yeah. my hands up shouting the victory, he promised me double for my trouble. Yes. So I'm yet praising God. So when you see me at church praising God, I'm praising him because I know what he's done for me. <laughs> I'm praising Lord. him because I know when the enemy tried to destroy me, take my life, take my mind, God didn't let him. So I'm praising him because I'm so thankful. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank hallelujah. You. Even though I still have challenges, even though yeah. I'm still not able to walk good, even though I'm still not able to do some of the things that I used to do. But I know God is able, and I know that He's going to bring me all the way out of this. So I'm standing here today as a standing miracle, walking, talking miracle of, 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 of what God can do. When I didn't have to read it, but I saw it for myself, I experienced it for myself. Yes, yes. So I'm not telling you about anything that I've heard, but I'm telling you about something that I went through and still there. And I know that my testimony is going to get greater and greater because God said, tell yes. it, tell it to let everybody know that God did it. God is my Jehovah Rapha. He is my healer. He <laughs> is the bottom in Gilead. He is the great physician. Oh, I know I'm not trying it for myself. He is the yes. mind regulator. When the enemy tried to take my mind, God didn't let him take my mind. So I know him for myself. Yes. Oh, I don't say that. I don't say that. I don't know. And he's a keeper. Even when I yes. don't even even want to be careful. I said, God, just take me. He's a keeper. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for being the miracle working God that he is. I would yeah. not be here today if it wasn't for the God that's on my side. Yeah. And so I continue to tell, to encourage, and tell everyone to trust God, to believe him. I walk by faith and not by sight every day of my life, still believing and trusting God to do what he promised me to do. God bless you and thank you for this opportunity, Evangelist. God oh, bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, oh, Jesus. Glory oh, hallelujah. God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God. Some people that's going through that very thing right now. God brought you through it. He's able to bring you through it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Testimony. Oh, yes. oh my goodness, that right there, my soul. Oh, so hallelujah. Much. 
mother. Oh, I mean, hallelujah. Pastor, oh, my mm. goodness. That, that oh, just hallelujah. took me to a whole different level. Oh, because oh, my we God, my have God. our endurance and our yes. trials and tribulations yes. so much. Yes. But it's mm. always the one that's going through greater. Yes. We have to be, that's why the Bible tells us to be thankful in all things. Yes, yes. Because someone yes. is going through a whole lot worse than what Hallelujah. you're going through. Mm. And, and God is right. Hallelujah. God don't lie. Mm. He said if he, he's yes. going to bless you with yes. God, he's going to yes. bless you with yes. God. Yes, I receive so it. Just wait for the promises of God. It. Oh, I'm right. holding on. Mm. <laughs> do, 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 oh, say. I'm not going to let go. <laughs> Oh, the yes. Yeah, the best is yet to come. The oh, I receive it. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ooh, hallelujah. Mm. Ooh, hallelujah. Mm. I, um, Ooh, hallelujah. I was sitting here thinking, Lord, and Lord, 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 Lord begins Lord, to deal Lord. with my mind, and he changed it mm. up on me. And he was con he's concerned about our actions. Yes. Going, you know, and um, when he, he asked the question, he asked the question, he said, what are you doing? Mm. And I, I was like, okay. So he took me to the scripture, to Romans chapter six, yes. verses, mm. uh, starting at verse one. And the yeah. word reads mm. as such. It says, yes. what shall we say then? Shall mm. we and sin that grace may abound, God forbid. How shall mm. we that are dead to sin live yeah. any longer therein? Know ye not that ye that so many of mm. us as were baptized into Christ Jesus was baptized mm. into his death. Yeah. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism yeah. unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should mm. walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Mm. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Now I begin yeah. to understand why he said, you know, what are we doing? You know, mm -hmm. oftentimes we think that we can straddle the fence, but we can't mm -hmm. straddle the fence. Mm -hmm. The words say there's a difference between clean and unclean, holy yeah. and unholy. Yeah. You know, as a uh, pastor was giving her testimony, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes we say we're strong enough, but mm -hmm. we really not that strong. That's why we have to continue in prayer and supplication. Yeah every yes. day to endure in these last and evil days yes. and the enemy is on a rampage to sift many as weak because yes. he's trying to take many as he possibly can to hell like a fire with him it's yes. not his souls because the word tells yes. us that all souls are minds mm -hmm. and all souls belong to god it doesn't yes. belong to the devil but we have mm -hmm. to give an account what are we doing in this body so that's why mm -hmm. god asked me the question he said mm -hmm. what are you doing Yes. What are you doing with your time? Are you complaining? Are you murmuring? Are you pleasing the flesh? Mm. Are you helping someone? Are you building mm. up your sister and your brother in Christ? What are you doing? We're living in the last and evil's days. No man knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man shall return. So we yes. have to be on guard and on point. We have to be at the doorpost watching. Yes. The Bible tells us to watch and pray. But how many of us is actually watching? Mm. You know, how many of us is praying? It's very few of us praying. Mm. Many of us have lost our prayer lives. We have. We have lost our prayer lives. We mm. have gotten distracted about the cares of this world. Oh, I got to go get this done. Or oh, I got to go get mm. that done. Mm. But the trouble arise. The first thing mm. you want to do is call upon Jesus. But where yeah. was Jesus when everything was okay? Mm. Where were Jesus, you know, when when you felt like you didn't need him? Where was Jesus then? Mm. He was standing at the door and knock. He said, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. He said, any man hearing my voice and will open up unto me, mm. he will abide with thee. But all of a sudden, I, this world I have from my own eyes because I'm not judging. The words say you shall know them by the fruit they bear. 
Mm-hmm. So as I'm seeing everything going on around us, is so many of us have taken grace for granted. Mm. Yes. And God is really tired. That's mm. why the word tells us, shall we continue in sin that mm. grace may abound? God we, forbid. Everybody have heard mm. the word. There's no excuse. Mm. The word tells us. You know what's right from wrong. We have the law, the Torah, the Ten Commandments. But oftentimes people just say, okay, that was some words spoken by a man of old. But those words are so powerful right today. That is a statue and a law God set aside to help us. But do you really want to be helped? Do you want to help your soul or do you want to help your flesh? That's the question. What are we doing? We have choice. The word tells us, he said, I set before you life and I set before you death. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Either you're going to serve mammon or you're going to serve the master. But rather we know it or not, if we pick the master, we have everything. The word Mm -hmm. tells us he owns a thousand cattle on the hill. The Mm. earth is his, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell Mm -hmm. therein. Everything Mm. and everybody belongs to God. So how dare you neglect the one that giveth you life? Mm. How dare you neglect the one that gives you breath and opportunity to open your eyes, to go on that job? You think it's that job providing? It's not that job Mm. providing. God Mm. is the provider. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on Mm. our side, where Uh. would we be? Where would we be? Yes. You really think about it. Think about just go back, go back five weeks. They ain't got to go back five years. Go back five days, mm. even five minutes. You know it was God that gave you peace in that situation. You mm. know it was God because oftentimes we we just push him on to the side like he's just a piece of paper or an entity we pick up. That's mm. That's not the right spirit to have. Don't you know he has choice just like we do? Mm -hmm. He has a choice to set judgment and he has choice to leave us here. But you know, oftentimes we take his blessings for granted. It's not the stuff he do. It's these little small things we're not grateful for. You Mm -hmm. know, did Christ die in vain? Christ did not die in vain. Mm -hmm. But anytime we sin, do you not know we crucify him afresh? Mm. We do. That's what the words say. We crucify him afresh. But Mm. don't you realize you one day will hold all the accountability, responsibility of your action. When Mm. you stand before that great throne and you the deed books will be open. Many might say, well, oh, that's all she preach. Oh, that's all she teach. Because I'm warning, you know, the Bible tells us to cry loud, spread not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show mm-hmm. my people their transgression. Mm-hmm. There's opportunity. You don't want to be like the rich man and Lazarus. You mm-hmm. don't want to be that way. As, as Lazarus was sitting in the bosom of Abraham and the rich man was in hell, but he just wanted a dip, just a cool dip of water on his tongue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was so hot in hell. Where there is weeping and gashing of teeth. Mm. What are we going to do, y'all? What would it take? God Mm. has sent so much warning. The Bible is speaking every second of the day. But are we taking heed to what the word is telling us? Mm. He is soon to return, y'all. No man knows the day or the hour when the Mm. Son of Man shall return. Oftentimes we find ourselves so busy with Abu or Abuet. Or with that car that God bless you with. Or mm. with that job. Or with the kids. Oh, I got to go get my hair done. Oh, I got to go get my mm. nails done. Where is your priority? Mm. What are you doing? Who is priority in your life? Who is your Lord? Who is your God? Who is your master? Who comes first before anything on this side of the Jordan? Mm. Who? Who? Only you can answer that. That's why it's time for us to look in the mirror because we all got a stain over here and a spot over here that we need to tend to. We all do. Not one or two of us. We all do. 
And just for those who feel like I just did so much wrong where I can't do nothing. God is married to the backsliders. Yes. Trust me. And despite what people do, love and forgive. Love and forgive. Because forgiveness is the key. You really want to be blessed on this side of the Jordan? Start forgiving. The word tells us in order to obtain mercy, you got to be merciful. You got to be merciful. You have to love thy neighbor as thyself. You have to have consideration for others. And consideration that if I don't want to be treated that way, why would I treat someone else that way? But mm -hmm. everybody doesn't have that mindset. That's why the word tells us, let this mind be in you, mm -hmm. which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's the mind of Christ. He took himself when he came through 42 generation. He didn't think about himself. He thought about you and me mm -hmm. and everybody else. He had a compassion and a love for everybody. Everybody. So mm -hmm. how dare you say I am a Christian and you have no compassion? How dare mm -hmm. you say that I'm a Christian and you have no love for your neighbor? Mm -hmm. How dare you say I am a Christian and you don't forgive? You're not a Christian. Mm -hmm. You need to check your, check your salvation. Yeah. You know, the word tells us, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that the Lord Jesus raised him from the dead, thou mm -hmm. shalt be saved. We're not saved. We are in the process of being saved. One day, if when God calls our name and we stand before that judgment seat, if our name is found in the Lamb books of life, we are saved. That's, that's the only way we're saved because thou shalt, shalt meaning there is a promise if thou do this, thou shalt be saved. So we have to be mindful of this. So we're, that's why this race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong, but he that can endure to, to keep mm -hmm. going because it's every day easy. Every day ain't easy because sometimes you're going to want to throw in the towel, but God told us, don't be weary and well-doing. You shall reap if you faint not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get a little weak along the way, but the word tells us, uh, I waited patiently for the Lord and he heard me. See, you got to call, call upon him while you're running this race. We, we got to call on him. You know, so we have to be mindful of that. We we do. Mm. It's not going to be easy. It's not. The task in our life is not going to be easy. The pastor just gave her a testimony about Job experience. We all have had a Job experience. I know I have. I felt like I want, I really wanted to die. There, there's some things that transpired in my life that I really wanted to die. I told God, I said, God, no more. I'm through. Just going to take me out of here. I'm through. But God had me here for purpose. And just like God has you here for purpose, has everybody here for his purpose, his praise, his glory, and his honor. Do you not know that's the reason for your creation? Do you not know that, you know, that's the reason he let you open your eyes this morning? You know, we are all lights. The word say, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. But are, is your light dim or is you bright? And the only way you stay bright and you be able to stand and declare the works of the Lord, you have to live a holy life. Holiness with no man shall see the Lord. That's what the word tells us. We can't straddle the fence. We can't be wavering in our faith because without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible. Oh, I want to please man. Why are you pleasing man when you can please God? The word said, and, and you want to please man so you can get all this materialistic things. Do you not know God give you a wow moment that will blow your mind and make you think back? And, 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 and it will literally blow your mind. That's why the word says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Because see, these little material things, there's nothing to God. It's nothing to God. To give someone millions, that's nothing to God. It, it doesn't matter about that. He cares about your soul. That's why he sent his only begotten son, because he cared about your soul. He loved you so much, even though we was born in sin and shaping in iniquity. 
God loved us so much. He sent his son through 42 generations to die for you and me. How much love is that? And so many people say, well, I love you. I love you. Okay, you love me so much. Do you love my soul? That, 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 that's a different level of, of, of understanding for some. Because if you really love me, you love my soul. You care about my soul. So many of these young ladies are being approached by these men that said, I love you, I love you, I love you. Okay, you love me, but you want to sleep with me? No, you don't love me then. You, you love what I can give you, but that's not real love. We have to have that true holiness love. We have to have that kind of love that, that despite anything, we're going to live right. That's a real love. That Young ladies, young women, if a man comes to you and say that I love you, but don't offer you Christ, you turn a deaf ear. You run the other way. As the Bible said, you shake the dust from your very feet and let your peace return unto yourself. And you keep going. Because if he really loves you, he's going to want you to go to church. He ain't going to want to touch your body because he knows that body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He knows that. And he knows the bed is honorable in the eyesight of God. It's a lot of things we can go out here and do. But is it wise to do it? Is it wise to go and rob a bank and God said, thou shalt not steal? Is it wise to go sleep with your neighbor's wife or your husband and God said, thou shalt not covet? Is that wise? It's not wise. You cannot ask God for wisdom and you do things contrary to his word. He said, I'd rather have you hot or I'd rather have you cold. You, you can't straddle the fence. So we have to ask God to let us look in the mirror. Look in the mirror so that we can, we can see ourselves. Because see, one day we have to give account to everything we do. The Bible tells us, and the books will be open. The books will be open. And one day they're going to be open for all of us. You know, I said years ago, I said, what I want listed of me is praise, prayer, and encouragement. I want to be able to say I'm helping someone. That's my desire because I desire to see God. I desire to see and to rest in his bosom. I, I desire that. That's my desire. Everybody have different desires, but that's my desire is to seek God. It, look, I want to see him and I want to hear him say, servant, well done. That's what I want to hear him say. I want to hear him say, servant, well done. You know, we all have gotten caught up even in our blessings. God has blessed us with different positions in the church and everything. But it's, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. I know the calling over my life. I know that I, I've been called to prophesy to this world. I know that. God has told me that. But you know, I'd rather be called servant. Just call me servant. If you call me a servant, I, I, I feel it's something about that just bless my heart because I love to serve and help people. And so many say that they're Christians but don't want to serve. Our greatest king, our, our only king, he came to serve. He is our greatest example. So what are we doing? That's the question that God had for us. What are you doing? You know the scripture where it says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? We all know that scripture. That letting us know that God got a tolerance level and God is actually getting tired. How much do he have to take? How much do he have to take? How much do he have to let his son just be crucified afresh? You know, we don't think about these things that, you know, even God that sits on the throne and his son that sits there on the right hand interceding for us each and every day. But what do we do with our actions? What are we doing? What are we doing? Only you know what you're doing. Even those secret things you do in secret that no, you think nobody knows of, God is watching. His eyes behold the good as well as the evil. That simple drink that you decide to set, take and try and justify it. There's no justification of sin. There's no justification of sin. So we all have to get it right. We have to be covered in the blood of the lamb. That's what our sins have to be covered. That's why the Bible tells us to repent daily. God knew it wasn't going to be an easy task for us. He already knew. He already knew. Oh, my children, they're going to go through some things and they're going to fall and they in their flesh and spirit don't strive with man always. So 
you know, I have repentance here. See how much love that is? That is love. He gave us grace. That is love. That is love. But we take those small things for granted. But indeed, it is a blessing. It is a blessing to come before you all today. I'm grateful for Pastor Anita. She, that testimony just tore me up. I was over here in tears. She gonna have these eyelashes just going over which kind of way. And, um, I am so grateful that indeed is a blessing. Um, you all know that it could have been me is growing yeah. rapidly. I'm yeah. talking about extremely rapidly to where uh, we're going to start having um, service twice a week. We, we mm -hmm. are. Either it's going to be, you know, Wednesday or Friday. I don't know. Whatever the Lord say, we just going to leave it in God's hands and let him do him. Mm -hmm. But we also needs to start coming together for prayer. Just 30 minutes to an hour, just straight prayer because much prayer, much power. Mm -hmm. How can you say you got power when you ain't got a prayer life? Mm -hmm. So you all be blessed. I love you all. You mm -hmm. all have a great evening. God bless you all. Um, Pastor, did you have any words of closement or words of encouragement that you wanted to share? No, I think I've taken up enough of your time, but God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for allowing my testimony to go forth that someone may be blessed and delivered or healed from it. And yeah. I just, and well, we can give God all the glory. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much, Pastor Anita. You all be blessed. I love you mm -hmm. all. See you all next week. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye-bye.